Every sports car fan knows, and that is Lamborghini and Watkins Glen. You put those together, and you have one heck of a show, and that's what we'll expect to see today, round six of the 2022 Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America Series from Watkins Glen International Raceway, and it is a beautiful day. Temperatures in the mid 80s and not a cloud in the sky in the Finger Lakes area of New York. Watkins Glen, what an iconic racetrack. Since 1956, it's been here, and yes, it's been through some changes, but the history still remains. As you look at this track, 3.4 miles and some great passing opportunities Great opportunities to stretch the legs on these Lamborghini Super Trofeo Huracan Evo 2s. Turn one, great passing zone there, heavy on the brakes, and then climb the hill through the S's to the inner loop. You can get it done there, but the braking zone, very, very short indeed, then hurry down through the laces of the boot to the toe of the boot, the hairpin, into turn eight, what we call the heel of the boot, and that's another great braking opportunity there. You can get a pass done, then back onto the short course and around to complete a lap here at Watkins Glen. Welcome in everyone, I'm Brian Till along with Jeremy Shaw. We'll bring you all the action today. And Jeremy, two races on a race weekend. Race number five of the calendar was yesterday. This is race number six, the halfway point. Certainly saw action yesterday, expect the same today. Yeah, it was a tremendous race uh, yesterday. It started off uh, with 36 cars taking the green flag action all the way. Danny Vermal starts from the pole the third time this season. They'll start up front in the number one car again, but Slade Stewart, a problem before he ever got to the green, ran over debris on the racetrack, lost that left rear tire. And speak about problems, a penalty. Patrick Fiala in that bright orange and black Lamborghini, the number 50, out of line at the start. He had to serve a drive-through penalty, and that cost them dearly. They would come back for a good finish. But that was a problem. No problem for the number one, though. Kyle Marcelli took over from Danny Formal at the pit stops. Lap 18 takes the lead back from John Gianno Torino and never looks back. Speaking of looking back, she had Sandra Soma. He was looking backwards down the racetrack for a minute, spun out of the lead, but maintained it in class. But in the end, the number one comes home with the victory in the pro category. Great run there, Brian Ortiz in Pro-Am in the number 47. He celebrates two wins on the season, and we talked about Chandra Soma. He managed to hold on to that lead in the AM category, a little spin and win, and then the victory for the 38 in LB Cup. Great run there, great racing throughout, and as we talked about, good action all along. And you talk about the win for the 38, I believe, indeed, that was his first win of the season, maybe his first win for Scott Schmidt in Lamborghini. In anything, yeah, absolutely right. It was a tremendous performance by Scott to, to take that to victory yesterday uh, in that uh, number 38 car for TPC Racing. So uh, big field of cars again. We've got uh, everybody running the same Lamborghini Huracan Super Trofeo Evo 2. And this is a, a beast of a race car. It's absolutely glorious. So it sounds fantastic and it is fast. We've got eight pro cars. We've got four different categories of driver, therefore. Everybody running the same car. Eight pros, seven pro ams, 15 ams, and six LB Cup. That's for the least experienced drivers for a total of 36. That's a record for this championship since it was started in 2013. The, the pole sitters in the classes, in LB Cup, it's uh, Slade Stewart starting on the pole for the third time this season in car number 14 for Flying Lizard Motorsports. He will start from the 24th position in AM. David Starb, his first pole, an excellent performance in car number 48 for Precision Performance Motorsports in car number uh, 48. He will start in the 16th position. The pro uh, pole sitter actually starting second on the grid. That is our championship leader, Kyle Marcelli, in car number one for Wayne Taylor Racing. But on the overall pole position, a pro-am contender making his debut this weekend, the IMSA driver development, diversity development driver, Jaden Conright from California in car number 42 for NTE Sport. Conright also running in the sailing six hours of the Glen in a Lamborghini in the GTD category. So he's had a lot of time around this racetrack this weekend, but literally no time in these Lamborghini Super Trofeo 
Evo 2s until he showed up at the racetrack on Thursday. He, on Wednesday, he didn't even know he was going to be driving the car until Wednesday evening he got the call to say, would you like to drive in the Super Trevor race as well? He said, absolutely, yes. How long did and, that take, uh, you think? Yeah, not very long. <laughs> uh, and uh, But what, a, what uh, a, a wonderful job he did yesterday in that qualifying session to put this number 42 car for NTE Sport on the pole position. Be interesting to see. Conrad, obviously very, very quick, but he hasn't raced but the race yesterday, so experience could come into play here. Talk about experience, a lot of it outside the front row in that black and blue number one prestige performance. Conright, not the best start in the world, but a great run from Nelson PK Jr. in that red and white Lamborghini, but then I think PK kind of got pinned up against yeah. the wall and actually ended up losing a position. He did, didn't he? Because uh, Jaden Conrad, a little bit conservative there, which is very sensible for somebody uh, in his first start uh, from the pole position in these cars, just his second start overall. Of course, yesterday he hopped into the car halfway through the race, so he's never done a first lap before. Uh, so he did, he did, it was very sensible there. Karma certainly allowed him to go around the outside. And as you say, Nelson PK was challenging down the inside. He was a big loser. He's fallen back to one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh, seventh position. In that, and, and Sam Motorsports bright red, number 30. Oh, Whoa, and a problem wow. there. That's a big hit. Up at the exit of the bus stop, we've had a problem, and it looks like the 43, I believe, that's found the tire barrier, the 45, actually, 46. Yeah, get it right. Yeah. I'll go through all the 40s and get there it taken go. care yeah. of, Jeremy. It, it was certainly it was one of the uh, uh, Precision Performance Motorsports uh, entries there, and that was the car that was fifth. It was Bryson Liu who was running fifth in Pro Am. It was a restart. Look. Nice clean start that time. Yeah, here's a, that was a look at the start. You could see PK get bottled up, and looks like the 46 just up on the curb there yeah. in that left-hand portion on the exit. Yeah. Gets up on the curb, the car gets unsettled, and it comes around and into the fence. That was a big hit, moved the tires, and I think perhaps even the guardrail just a little bit. So a big, big hit. But you look at the car, it really doesn't look much the worse for wear. Bryson Liu, that, that contact there. Track safety team on the scene. And this uh, team, let's have a look again. Yeah, he's up on the curb there, and uh, I think he was trying to kind of get it sorted out, but there was a car immediately to his right, and he had to sort of take evasive action while he was already trying to get the car back under control, and he got away from uh, the youngster there, Bryson Liu, from, uh, from Salt, Salt, Lake City, Salt Lake City, Utah, and he goes for a pretty wild ride, a 19-year-old. He is a, uh, a student of business at the University of Utah when he's not racing. Uh, he had a tremendous run yesterday. He'll be sh he was due to share that number 46 car with uh, John Capestro Dubetz, who should have started right up towards the front of the field yesterday. And we wonder what happened to him at the start. In fact, what happened, there was a brake problem on the first on the, on the the pace lap. He came into the pits at the end of the first lap. The team bred, bled the brakes on that car, sent him out way at the back of the field. And they came uh, all the way through the field to finish third in Pro-Am. So it was a great uh, recovery drive by John uh, Capestro Dubetz and then taken over from by Bruce Bryson Liu in the second part of that race. It was a tremendous run yesterday, but unfortunately, it's going to be a short day today for that team. And great to see Bryson Liu step out of that damaged car. Obviously, significant damage on the right side. That's where the impact came from. Looking back to the start, you see PK gets a good run, but just doesn't have the space to get by the pole sitter, Jaden Conright. And while he gets pinned up against the inside, three cars go by on the outside. A bunch of other cars with a good run through turn one. And PK loses another position or two as they head down the back straightaway. Look at the start, a little stack up effect a little further back. And there's the look. Conright kind of blocks a little bit as they head down to turn one. And PK has to get out of the throttle and the freight train goes by on the outside. Yeah, but nice clean start up front, wasn't it? Nicely two by two there, and a uh, really good clean start, and some great racing down to turn one. But uh, I think uh, Jaden Conroy there, the pulse, has just been really sensible. He's just guest driving in this car. They're not going for the championship. He's just out there to, uh, well, basically, because the car was entered, the driver who, who was supposed to drive it, Lucas Peterson from Sweden, didn't get his paperwork completed in time. So the car was sitting there vacant, and you know, they wanted to run the car, so they called... Uh, uh, called up uh, Jaden and said, would you like to join 
Don Yount, who's also, who, who was also a fairly late uh, incumbent in that seat, to drive it. He said absolutely yes, but uh, as I say, they're not, they're not going for the points. It, they're just getting out there for a bit of fun, basically, and a bit more track time for him. But this car is quite different to the to the uh, Lamborghini that he and Don Yount will be driving in the WeatherTech race tomorrow afternoon. So uh, yeah, there's quite a, quite a difference between the cars that, that they might both be Lamborghini Huracans, but uh, this one has uh, a bit more horsepower, a lot less aerodynamic grip, and it is super fast on the straights, 170 miles an hour as I head uh, into the inner loop, which is about 12 miles an hour faster than the GTD car. Able to pull the 46 out of the way, and that is surprising to me after that big hit, but it also shows that the tires did their job. They absorbed the energy and decelerated the car at a rate that it, it saves the driver, most importantly, the injuries, and it also helps minimize the damage on the vehicle themselves. Round number six of the 2022 Lamborghini Super Trofeo Championship from Watkins Glen International Raceway. Brian Till, Jeremy Shaw with you. And this event did not get underway the way we would like to see it. The start was fine, but a half a lap later at the inner loop, Problems for Bryson Liu aboard the number 46 as he gets on the curb, turns the car sideways and makes contact with the outer wall at the exit of the inner loop. And while they get that sorted, the Lamborghini Huracan safety car is in control of the field right now. And talk about Kyle Marcelli a little bit. Great run yesterday to finish after taking the car from Danny Formal. They have been on the pole the last four races, Jeremy. And I know you and I talked about this yesterday so important those pole position points 15 points for a victory which really isn't a lot yeah. and you get one for a pole position so qualifying on pole is absolutely paramount so they've got four points right now out of their total that came from pole positions in addition to the three victories that they've had on the season they've been fast they've been consistent and that's why they lead the championship in the pro category. That's, that is right. Uh, I mean, coming into yesterday's race, they had a two-point edge over Eduardo Piscopo and Patrick Cuyala, who had just a one-pole position. So it was just those extra pole, couple, three points for the pole position that uh, was able to get them the championship lead. Uh, unfortunately for Piscopo and Cuyala, yesterday they had some difficulties, finished uh, some way back down the order. But uh, they will be looking to make their way forward today. Well... For Kuyala, remember the penalty right at the start, and he had to serve the drive-through, and then they got a time penalty later for the pit stop infringement. They were a little short on their pit stop, so another penalty there. It was one of those deals where when you look back through the order, it dropped them, at least in the pro category, it dropped them back where they didn't want to be, like you said, losing valuable points. Lights out on the Huracan safety car. So we should be going green this next time by, and that is gonna be good news for these competitors. Mandatory pit stop in the middle of this race and driver changes will take place at that point in time. If you're in a two driver format, if you're in a one driver format, you'll sit in the car and you'll have to stay in pit lane for an additional three seconds, 90 second minimum pit stop time from pit in to pit out for two driver combinations, 93 seconds for a one driver lineup. And Jeremy, you and I always talk about this. It makes perfect sense. If you've been in the car and you serve that pit stop and you sit there, when you leave pit lane, you know exactly what you have underneath. You know exactly the handling characteristics on the car for the day. So you have a bit of an advantage on a driver who's getting in cold. So that three second difference very, very much valid, and we'll see that play out today between two driver pairing and single driver lineups. Kyle Marcelli being patient, maintaining the pace of the safety vehicle that's led them back around to restart this race. The field lined up in single file order, waiting, waiting, Marcelli in the restart zone between 10 and 11, pulls the trigger, 600 plus horsepower on tap. And that Lamborghini, the number one prestige performance entry, blasts down the front straightaway towards turn one, sees the green flag. We are racing again at Watkins Glen. 
Nice clean single file restart down into turn one. Nobody uh, doing anything silly down there. Here's a pass down towards the back of the field there. Down the inside goes uh, number seven. That is the, the move for 17th and 18th position. AJ Muss, the uh, former snowboard Olympian, makes a pass there in that car number seven for the 47 motorsports team. And out front, Car Marcelli, a perfect start to get that car into the lead. All right, back through the inner loop. We've gotten it restarted. Let's see if we can get a lap in the books right now. Jaden Conright to the inside of the number six. Good run down into the bus stop. And then down, diving into the toe of the boot. Great racing here, side by yeah. side, through the laces of the boot as they head up towards the hairpin, the toe. Dyson there with Patrick Liddy. So it's his pro-am cars, second, third, and fourth. Dario Capitanio in second position now in car number two for Dream Racing and Motorsports. He's uh, putting the pressure still on Kyle Marcello as much as he can in that battle for third with Patrick Liddy. Uh, was briefly overtaken by Jaden Conroy, but was able to redress that balance. And the Eduardo Liberati, another uh, Dream Racing entry in car number 27. That is a pro car in the fifth position, just ahead of Eduardo Piscopo and Nelson Piquet Jr. And you've got to be smart. You pointed it out, Jeremy. Pro-Am cars running second, third, and fourth on the racetrack. you got to know who you're racing with. Don't risk your car to battle with a car that's not in your class. It's all about your points. Sure, you want to get by them and get up to the next battle in your class. You've got to think it's just like multi-class racing in IMSA WeatherTech. You've got to know who you're racing with. You're in your own championship. Right now, the pro entry, Kyle Marcelli, out in front and they have been powerful all season long aboard that number one Wayne Taylor Racing Lamborghini Huracan. Strong again here. Brian Ortiz in the 47. Bright orange and yellow, the winner in Pro-Am yesterday, putting the pressure on the red and white number 30 of Nelson PK as they went up through the S's, now into the inner loop. Ortiz is there and PK has his sights set on Eduardo Piscopo just in front aboard the number 50. Yeah, tremendous run yesterday for Brian Ortiz. I spoke to him this morning, though. He didn't just didn't get qualifying right for the second race, so he's a bit disappointed to start down in the ninth position. But uh, he's already made up one place, up into eighth place, and, and right behind Nelson Piquet Jr. As you say, a big, long train of, uh, of cars here heading down into the toe of the boot. Some tremendous racing going on here. There's pros and pro-ams all tied in there together. John Miller leads the AM category in 10th position in car number 18. That's a really good run for uh, John Miller. Uh, he's uh, shown some really, really good pace. In that, another, that's another the NT eSport entrance. So teammates to Jaden Conright, who also started on the outright pole position. Billy Johnson now closing in on the rear wing of Brian Ortiz. That is not a battle in class. Johnson in the pro category aboard the number 71. The TPC racing entry, Lamborghini Washington. Johnson trying to move forward, seeing if he can get caught up a little bit and take the battle to Nelson Piquet. Already this morning, faster lap times than yesterday. Significantly faster lap times than yesterday. The fastest lap in the uh, in the first race yesterday evening was a 148 point. No, it wasn't. It was a 140. No, scratch that. They got them the wrong way around. Okay, fine. It's a 145.9. 146.4s. That's why I was surprised because they had yeah, scratch that. Uh, it was 145.9 <laughs> yesterday. 145.8 was the fastest lap yesterday. That was by Dario Capitanio. Today, the fastest lap so far is uh, Kyle Marcelli, 146.40. And again, with this 50-minute race, uh, tyre wear is an issue here. Uh, the drivers are going to have to look after their, their Pirelli tyres as much as they can, uh, particularly given how hot it is here uh, this afternoon at Watkins Glen International. Tyre wear, definitely a factor. And if you push too hard too soon on these tyres, if, uh, if you're sharing this car with somebody else, the second driver, is potentially going to struggle if you take too much out of these tires in the first stint of the race. It's exactly what we saw yesterday as Gianno Torino aboard the 88 be coming into your shot here in just a minute aboard the number 88 with that Italian flag livery on it. There it is right there. His teammate, Laura Spinelli, absolutely flying 
in that Lamborghini Palm Beach entry yesterday. And when he handed it over to Torino, Torino doing a great job until about the last three or four laps, Jeremy. And we saw the performance of the 88 just fall off a cliff. And Torino went backwards in the last two or three laps of this race. The tire is just absolutely used up. You need to be able to hand the car over to your teammate and have them have something to do battle with in the final stages. That is definitely something that these teams are going to have to be uh, aware of. I mean, if you're driving solo and there's a bit less than half of the cars in this field have only one driver for this race, the rest of them have two, they will change over at the uh, mid-race pit stop, mandatory pit stop that Brown has already talked about. If you're driving the race solo, that's fine. Uh, you, you, you know you, you've got to, you've, you know what you're going to have for the for the rest of the race. Uh, but if you're if you're handing over the car to somebody else, you want to make sure that he has enough tire to get him to the end of this race and be able to push hard and go for positions in the closing stages. There's a big spin. Is that Luke Berkeley yeah. aboard the 23? Out of the 11th position. Saw a cloud of dust from behind the apex curbing, the right-hand apex curbing at the exit of the inner loop. And I think perhaps Luke just dropped a wheel there. These curbs will fool you. You can run on them and you think everything is fine and then you push just a little bit harder the next time through. There's the 88, there's the dust cloud and Berkeley at the bottom of your screen, just up on it. And then the spin to the outside, no harm, no foul, back underway. But Take yeah. your breath away. Yeah, I mean, it was a big, long spin that. I mean, he lost it coming out of the inner loop there, and he probably ended up on the grass, what, two or 300 yards late, <laughs> rather up the racetrack. So that was a, uh, a fairly uh, interesting moment there for the uh, youngster the, uh, there, you, Luke Berkey, just 18 years of age from Davie, Florida. Interesting, Jeremy, looking at the bottom of the timing screen. Bright pink banner, it just went off. The start had still been under review. Officials really looking hard to make sure that no one had run afoul of the rules. So it appears at this point in time with that message gone that the start must be good. But they took a long, long look at it to make sure that no one got an advantage that they shouldn't have had. Marcelli with an advantage right now, but it is a well-earned advantage. He's put the hammer down and has slowly pulled away from Dario Capitano. The good thing for Kyle Marcelli is the next three cars in line are all pro-am entries, so he has nobody close to him that he needs to worry about right now. His job is to just stay focused forward and make sure that he has a car to hand over to Danny Formal in the closing stages of this race. Yeah, that is the, the key, uh, and certainly for the championship leader, even more so because uh, they, they uh, extended their lead uh, quite dramatically yesterday with the problems for the number 50 car that's currently running in the sixth position overall, but still on the podium in the pro category, but uh, still a long, long way to go in this race, and the pit stop window uh, will not uh, open yet for another couple of minutes. We've seen one car on pit lane, cuts now, but kind of a seven, but that is uh, that's AJ Muss. Uh, who's serving a penalty there. Is it a penalty? Not sure. Talk about the 50. Yesterday they finished sixth in the pro category, did Eduardo Piscopo and Patrick Chiala with the problems that they had. And so that has given a little bit of breathing room. And I say a little bit of breathing room because today's round marks the halfway point. So anything that you've struggled with in the beginning of the year, you still have half a season to make it up. Two races per weekend, so six races to go. Three more events, two of them here in the States, and then the final in Portugal. And I think that's another great thing about Lamborghini Super Trofeo is the worldwide aspect of the series, and then they come together for the championship rounds at the end of the season and the world championship as well, and it really gives these drivers something to look forward to. 36 cars, a record field entered here today, and we're seeing some great racing now that the field has gotten settled down. Brian Ortiz closing up on the back of Nelson PK Jr., that bright orange, yellow, and black number 47 that Ortiz piloted to the Pro-Am victory yesterday, trying to cut down on the gap between himself and Nelson PK, but again, two different class cars there so you've got to be careful about pressing too hard to get somebody that you don't really need to pass true that and uh, 
coming up for uh, 30, just under 31 minutes remaining in this race. Because of that full course caution at the start, the pit window might be adjusted just a little bit, maybe a little bit longer before the pit stop window opens. Generally, it is 20 minutes into the 50 minute race, up into, and it's a 10 minute window, so up until 20 minutes remaining, but that might well be uh, adjusted by a minute or two. Uh, and uh, we don't have that information precisely, but we, uh, we will find out when the pit window will be open. It'll probably be a, a lap or two from now. It certainly isn't open just yet. Strategy-wise, Jeremy, as Kyle Marcelli completes another lap, strategy-wise, you've got Marcelli turning in good, consistent laps out there, and I would imagine smooth with his hands on the wheel. You don't want to overload these tires with aggressive hands. This is a very flowing racetrack. And if you burn up those front tires, then you're going to have a car that you can't drive quickly around here. I'm sure he's being very smooth, but if he's in the groove right now, as the pit window has just opened, if he's in the groove, how long do you leave him out there? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, and I think you know, there's no reason to bring him in uh, yet because uh, he and Danny Formal are pretty closely matched in terms of pace. Uh, some of the uh, crews here will have... Uh, a car that is uh, one drive that is significantly faster than the other so you want him to have the maximum drive time the window as you say is open now we've had a few cars already onto the pit lane including car number 48 that was running in the uh, i think he was running in a, he was running in a second position in the am class david starby started on the pole position he'll be handing over that car to uh, nico riga that's another of the precision performance motorsports cars number 17 also onto the pit lane and a couple other cars a bit farther down the field. Lamborghini Super Trofeo from Watkins Glen International. Round six underway. The number 27 Bitbull entry. The championship winning car from last season. Eduardo Liberati behind the wheel right now. Running currently in the fifth position. Also got a look at the 50. Second in the championship as we came into the weekend were Eduardo Piscopo and his teammate Patrick Kiala, but they had some bad luck yesterday and talked about leaving the number one out and let him run, Jeremy, but this is early in the window. They're going to take this opportunity to get it done right now as Kyle Marcelli heads to pit lane. Yeah, and I think they perhaps realize that there's not too many cars on the pit lane at the moment, and uh, the car is in good shape. He's brought it into the, uh, into the pits in the lead, uh, and now a good pit stop here to allow Danny Formal to get back out and, uh, and finish off this race. But it's been a perfect strategy so far for this prestige performance Wayne Taylor Racing crew. Now, it'll be interesting. Yesterday, we didn't see a lot of tire pressure adjustments on the pit stop, but today, I'm watching two crew members hustle around this number one entry that Kyle Marcelli just climbed out of, making tire pressure adjustments. So the warmer temperatures, Jeremy, I think, have brought up the pressure in those Pirelli tires, this is the opportunity for a crew member to go out and bleed them down, drop some of the pressure back out, and see if you can hand the next driver in a little bit better car when he heads back out on the racetrack. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, the, that, that's the goal, certainly. And uh, if, uh, they, if they can do that, then absolutely great. But certainly, with it, as, as hot as it is today, those uh, tire uh, pressures and temperatures are going to go up pretty high here. That's the number three car against the service. That's Randy Soleri, who had a great run yesterday. Unfortunately, he came to an end early. I don't know why. I wasn't able to find him afterwards to find out what happened. But he had a really good run this weekend. There goes number 50 car after serving his pit stop. Uh, and uh, ahead of him on the racetrack is Danny Formal, who comes out. Uh, he'll, he'll be uh, down the order for a little while now until the other leaders come onto the pit lane. Meanwhile, Dario Capitani, who leads, just said his best lap of the race. 146.39 last time around for our race leader. That's car number two. And right behind him is uh, is Patrick Liddy in second place. Both of those, well, the top four cars right now, are all pro-am cars where the second driver isn't as quick as the, the pro that's at the wheel right now. So they're going to stay out as long as they can uh, until the pit stop window opens and then bring their cars into the pits. But uh, still the top three cars pretty closely matched. Dario Capitano about a second ahead of Patrick Liddy in second place in car number eight. And then the pole sitter, Jaden Conright, is right behind Liddy in third place. Well, the drivers have opportunities around this racetrack, 11 different corners opportunities to make mistakes in. We've seen some of those already today for the crew members 
their opportunity for mistakes is on the pit stop, and we just saw that for the 54 car. One of the crew members over the wall before the car stops. That's one of the safety rules of pit lane. You want to make sure the car is completely stopped before a crew member steps out in the lane. That is not what happened while servicing the number 54. So we'll get a penalty there, and it will be a drive-through. And this is a long pit lane here, and a drive-through penalty very costly indeed. Yeah, it is. And as we saw yesterday for the number 50 car, uh, they had a, a drive-through penalty and it cost them a chance to go for the win. And uh, that, that car was only two points behind in the championship. It cost a lot of ground. They ended up back in the sixth position in the class. A really good comeback, actually, to get that, that high up the order. And uh, they, uh, But they lost uh, ten points in that championship battle. It's Charlie Martin with the penalty. She came in and she'll have to serve a penalty because of a crew member. I know that's frustrating for a driver, but you have to look at it and just say, we are all in this together. I make mistakes in the race car from time to time. The crew members make mistakes from time to time as well. And you just have to accept that penalty and she'll have to come to pit road with the drive through. The car 89 now has a penalty. Pit lane speed violation. Five over. And so there will be a drive through penalty there. It's the LB Cup entry. Fred Roberts being shown behind the wheel right now. And I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's a single car entry, so that yeah. penalty belongs to Fred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he, Sometimes he, you can blame it on your teammates. <laughs> it's just a two-driver combo. That's right. The Canadian making his uh, debut this weekend in this championship. Absolutely loving it. He and uh, his, good, his close friend, uh, Jeff Courtney, driver for the NT Esport team. Both deals came together fairly late. Uh, they had a good run yesterday. I think Fred finished on the podium in the uh, LB Cup class, indeed he did on his debut, so he's happy with that, uh, but uh, he won't be happy with himself. At least, as you say, he, it's himself he has to kick, not his, not his co-driver. Little bit of a moment for Jaden Conright as he came down that diving left-hand turn that we call the laces of the boot, the car not getting to the apex. And for Jaden Conright, think about, he, yes, he's driving a Lamborghini and GTD, but that car has downforce, and you mentioned it earlier, Jeremy, the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Evo 2 is wickedly fast in a straight line, considerably faster than the GTD car, but the GTD car with all of the arrow on it is so fast in the corner. And I think perhaps Jaden Conright that time was thinking, I have more aerodynamics than I really did because he got down there and could not get the car to the apex. Either that or he's used up a lot of that Pirelli tire. And if that's the case, way too early for that is teammate's not going to be happy with the car that he hands over to him if he's already used up the Pirellis that he has on board. Yeah, no, quite. <laughs> but it's a learning curve. Well, wow. I mean, you think about Jaden without a lot of experience in these cars, how hard do you press? You know, wh where do you use up the car? Where do you try to hold back a little bit so that you're not burning up the tire? Yeah. Good pace, though, by each of those top three. They still remain... Uh, tied uh, you know just a second maybe that less than that between each of the top three cars Dario Capitano in the lead economy kind of two then number eight of Patrick Liddy then Jaden Conright who kind of 42 uh, them and John Miller who's running in the fourth position uh, are the last cars I think the only other guy who hasn't pitted is Slade Stewart in kind of a 14 the LB Cup leader at the moment Ophir Levy his rival for that uh, LB Cup lead came in last time around, and yes, yeah, Slade Stewart comes in this time around. So it's just the four cars yet to make a pit stop. Number two, eight, 42, and 18. Meanwhile, of those who have made a pit stop, Danny Formal having taken over from Carl Marcelli leads Patrick Cuyala by about six and a half seconds. Eduardo Liberati in car number 27 is running in third place. So that's 1, 50, 27, and 30. Nelson Pico Jr. And then Loris Spinelli in car 88 of the cars that have made a pit stop. Dario Capitano aboard the number two. The leader dives to pit lane. And the field will continue to shuffle. It'll shuffle even more. Car 45, that's Martin Fuentes with a penalty on the pit stop. Abnormally slow in the fast lane, impeding a car in pit lane. And a lot of times, if you jump out of the pit box too soon, your crew might call you on the radio and say, hey, slow down, slow down, slow down. You're going to have a short pit stop. The problem is, once you're in the fast lane, 
the far lane closest to the pit wall, you are expected to maintain pit lane speed. And anything slower than that, certainly anything slower than that, that impedes another car and slows them down is not uh, looked highly upon by the officials. So Fuentes having to serve that penalty in the 45. Yeah, really irritating. Uh, the uh, the pit stop window then just about to close, so we're seeing all the leaders coming in now, and also uh, Michael Manella there at, uh, in car number four and number 14 of uh, Slade uh, Stewart. So that is the that is a battle. Well, no, no, number four car is now, is now Am, isn't it? Uh, yes. So uh, that was not a battle for class position. But the four leaders uh, in a prime category, all in the pit lane now, Dario Capitano, uh, Patrick Liddy, Jaden Conright, and John Miller, and they will all be handing over to their respective drivers in this pro-am class. Uh, John Miller, of course, is the, in the am class, and he was leading that. Of the cars that have made a stop in am, uh, Shea and Soma has come out in the lead of that in car number 19, but we'll have to wait and see where he is in relation to the number 18 car of uh, John Miller's co-driver when he comes out of the pits. And uh, that would be uh, Lance Bergstein getting into that number 18 car from John Miller. Well, interesting, we talk about pit stops. You've got to be able to merge with traffic properly, and I, I'm going to be interested to see if there's uh, repositioning of cars. We had two cars side by side, one in the transition lane, one in the fast lane coming out. I think Slate Stewart may have been one of those, and they were side by side, and really the car in the transition lane should have dropped behind the car that was in the fast lane. That did not happen, so we'll have to see if that gets reset on the racetrack. Slate Stewart with the problem yesterday ran over some debris on the pace lap and cut down the tire, the left rear tire. He didn't even make it to the green flag before we had to pit. Much better run today. Much better run today. Yeah, he had all sorts of, he just had a nightmare yeah. yesterday, Slade Stewart. Everything that could go wrong uh, did go wrong. Uh, that uh, very distinctive uh, livery on that car, the uh, Sparkle Farts, apparently it's known as. Uh, it's a courtesy of his, of his daughter, so we can blame her. For that when it's Amelia Stewart who designed that car. Now, under the under the rear wing on that number 14 car, the name of of, uh, of Slade's four children: Amelia, Harry, Ethan, and Thomas. Uh, I know you're cheering on your dad here, and he's doing a good job to be leading in the in the LB Cup category at the moment, with John Hirschberg in second place in car number 13. And he's also got one of his uh, children who wants to, who wanted me to give a shout out to. That's his uh, his son Scott, who is back in California today. Scott Hirschberg, a happy 11th birthday, Scott. And Slate Stewart owes a little uh, family love for the graphics that are on his car. I understand that uh, the graphic package on his car was designed by his daughter. Yeah, by Amelia, that's exactly right. And uh, very proud of it is, is Slade. And it's and an attention getter. There were a lot of <laughs> photographers down there taking pictures before the cars rolled out to the false grid. Just over 17 minutes to go, round six of the 2022 Lamborghini Super Trofeo. North America from Watkins Glen International. Right now, a very familiar sight, and that is the number one prestige performance Wayne Taylor Racing Lamborghini Paramus entry running in the top spot. They lead that championship in the pro category. Poles the last four races. Win yesterday. A win at NOLA in the last weekend that we were there and the championship lead, and they are in command of this championship right now. But like I said, Jeremy, still have a long way to go. We're just now at the halfway point today, and this race is far from over. No, that's true. You're still uh, just under 17 minutes remaining in this race. And Danny Formal, he's going to lead of about three and a half seconds over Damon, uh, Damon Oki, who's come out in second position. That's the car that uh, Patrick Liddy drove in the first stint. Uh, Damon Oki is uh, twice a champion in the AM category in the past, but that's, that's the point. He's an AM driver against the pro, pros here right now. So he's going to have Patrick Kuyala uh, on his, knocking on his rear wing very shortly, hopefully not literally, trying to make a pass <laughs> for second position as Patrick Kuyala tries to chase down this race leader, Danny Formal. Yeah, hopefully not literally. There's Slade Stewart through the inner loop. And this was the exit of pit lane that I was talking about. Slade Stewart 
out in the fast lane and he's side by side with the other car that's there in the transition lane. If there is any overlap at all, the car in the transition lane goes behind the car in the fast lane. And that is not what we saw right there. Yeah, that'll be a penalty, I think, uh, for the number four car there, Michael Manella and Bart Collins. It was, I think it was Bart who drove uh, the opening stint in this race in that uh, car number four. Yes, indeed it was. So it was Michael Manella taking over there. And uh, Michael needs to have another look at the rule book, I think. A, a lot to think about. It's not just about driving the race car and, and and doing a pit stop and then going back out on track. The driver's responsible for knowing a lot, so is the crew, and they're responsible for reminding the driver from time to time. Track limits, an issue here at Watkins Glen in several corners, the 70, or the seven, I should say, being warned right now about being a little too exuberant with using the racetrack and then some being warned right now. That's Caleb Bacon aboard the number seven in the AM category. And there are several places where you can do it. That's one of them right now. But you see Danny from all stay on the racetrack. Two tires, actually just one tire needs to stay on that curbing. You'll see him drop two behind it. But this is what I've learned through the years, Jeremy. The cars that run up front tend to be undramatic. It, it, they look smooth and, and measured. It's not a handful, it's not a thrash. The car looks settled, the driver looks calm. And when you see that a lot of times, those are the cars that are fast. They're the ones that are running up front. The ones yeah. that are sideways and thrashing in the car, the photographers love them because it gives them great pictures, but a lot of times they're not the fastest cars on the racetrack. And what we've seen all weekend long, Kyle Marcelli and Danny Formal look like they're in a slot car on rails. Yeah, they're really doing a nice job too. Just to keep it nice and clean, here, really consistent laps here from our race leader, Kyle Marcelli. Uh, he's extending his lead over second place now out to nine, over nine seconds uh, as uh, Patrick Cuyala finally finds a way past to Damon Oakey. But the gap when he came out of the pits uh, after they both completed their stops with 6.6 .6 seconds. So Danny Formal has managed to extend this lead now out to 9.7 over the, the Finnish driver, Patrick Kuyala. Damon Oki down into uh, the third position, but still leading in Pro-Am. He's got about uh, eight seconds in hand over Sebastian Carrazzo in caliber 47, who's run seventh position overall. You know, what I'm seeing on the racetrack right now by Damon Oki is a smart drive. Three cars just got by him, but that's okay because he's the leader in Pro-Am. It was pro cars that went by, and I think as much for the car that's overtaking as well as the car that's being overtaken, we've said this before, understand with a class that you're fighting with, and consequently, I think Damon Oki making good decisions right now, not trying to get embroiled in the battle for the pro podium and just making sure that he keeps that car in the lead stay out front yeah that's the uh, that's the goal a bit farther back uh, down the order see that car number eight still leading in that pro-am category damon Oki, the canadian from vancouver and uh, a lot of experience in these cars he's had uh, this is his 58th start in this championship. He had 11 wins in the Pro-Am category, also 10 wins in Am as well on his own uh, previously. And uh, it's been a really good performance by, by him taking over from Patrick Liddy Cali from California. And they are currently leading that class, but he's now a gap to uh, Sebastian Carrazzo, 6.8 seconds as they complete their 18th lap with 12 minutes remaining. Whoops, there's a spin and into the wall for car number seven again. That's Caleb Bacon, the youngster. And that's significant damage, 12 minutes to go. Full course caution comes out, and this is gonna change everything. That almost eight second lead that Danny Formal had will go away as the Lamborghini Huracan safety car heads out on track to gather the field up, and will take several minutes to do that. No, Jeremy, perhaps three laps of green once we go back to it by the time they get this sorted out? Yeah, this is going to be really, really interesting. And uh, how much has uh, Danny Formal uh, been able to save his tires? Because he knows Patrick Cuyalo is a massive amount of experience in these cars. He's driving a number 50 car in the second position. The good news for Danny Formal is there's a couple of lapped cars in between himself and the uh, second place overall car of Patrick Cuyala, who just indeed set his best, that car's best lap 
last time around at 146.55 for the Finnish driver. Born in Spain, lived in Italy for a goodly portion of his life to Patrick, but now makes his home back in the in, back in the countryside in Sweden, he told me this morning. Oops, uh -oh. oh, wow, and that's our AM leader who was under intense pressure from Nico Riga, but it looks like uh, there's a problem there, a major problem. Yeah, and this is something that you see very, very rarely in Lamborghini Super Trofeo, and that is some type of a mechanical issue with the drive system, call it the engine, if you will, because that looks like the problem to me, and Chandra Soma, a great job to get that car out of the way. I was getting ready to say the thing that I'm so impressed with, you know, they talk about Lamborghini being the raging bull. Well, they're tough as a bull, I would think. We saw the problem earlier for Bryson Liu. They pulled that car out of the way. It was on all four wheels, even after the big hit at the exit of the inner loop. And then we just saw the problem for Bacon. That car actually, after that contact with the wall and all the damage that we saw, drove into pit lane. But I don't think this car is going anywhere. I think Chandra Sama is going to have to get towed out of the way. And the concern is fluid that might be coming out of that car. Let's take a look right there. A big puff of smoke as he exits the carousel and heads down to the laces of the boot. And he does a spectacular job of getting that car offline. He knows that he's got a mechanical issue. He knows he has an engine problem. And he's thinking, hey, I could be putting fluid down on the racetrack and I don't want to ruin it for the other competitors. And an excellent, excellent job of keeping your head together and thinking of the other competitors as well as he gets that wounded number 19 out of the way. And disappointment for sure, he had that win yesterday that kind of came in spectacular fashion, the spin on the penultimate lap, but he maintained the lead there, but it will not be repeated today. No, he was leading the class, but he was under intense pressure from Nico Riga in car number 48. Uh, and uh, disappointment for, for, for Sheehan, the 19-year-old from Austin, Texas, and really heads up driving there to get that car off the track. You, you absolutely made a really good point there, Brian Till, and uh, you've got to give him credit for that because he must be bitterly disappointed. Uh, he was, uh, you know, he, he's, he's going for this uh, championship lead in the in the AM category. At the beginning of the weekend, he was down in third position, only four points uh, behind the the class lead, uh, and. Uh, as a result of that uh, that win yesterday in the AM class, uh, he was just two points behind David Starb and Nico Riga. So uh, he was looking to, 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 if he'd been able to maintain position today, he would have perhaps taken the championship lead. But um, not only that, but he's going to lose a lot, quite a bit of ground. It's a super tight battle in the AM class. Cam Ali Abadi is right in there as well. And he is currently running in the fourth position in AM, so it's Nico Riga who will lead in column 48. Randy Soleri, a really good run for, for Randy in column 3 in second place. John Hennessy, also a great run uh, in column 33. That's one of the Arrow Electronics cars run by Ogara Change Racing US Racetronics. Uh, he's running in third position, just ahead of Cam Alibardi. Then Lance Bergstein, who's taken over from John Miller, who led the early stages of the race. And then Tom Tate from Scottsdale, Arizona, who's having his best run I think, of the uh, series so far. Tom's uh, an interesting character. He raced in the, uh, the Formula Russell series. He did some Super V even back in the back in the 80s, long, long, long time ago now, but was out of racing for many, many years, but uh, made a comeback a few years ago, did the, the Porsche uh, Club series, basically, and uh, decided he wanted to go pro racing again. And it, it's, I spoke to him this morning, I haven't seen him for about 30 years, actually, but I finally saw him this morning. And uh, he's <laughs> absolutely loving this year. He had what a great, what a great view there. Oh, yeah, he's still that, smiling. That, that's good to see. That's the first time he smiled that he was, since he's been standing down yeah. there. And you can tell from the body language and his head shaking when he got out and standing there a minute ago looking dejectedly yeah. at the back of the car with the smoke coming out of it. It's <laughs> kind of like it was breathing its last breaths. And, but good to see that uh, he's recovered from that. I mean, not a bad day when you're driving a Lamborghini at Watkins Glen, even if it doesn't end up the way that you want it to. Clock counting down with Good this attitude. full course caution. Closing in on six and a half minutes. It's going to be a dash to the checker if we get this restarted. It's always good to see the AMR rapid response vehicles on scene as quickly as they are. And the crew from here at Watkins Glen trying to get that Lamborghini on that flat toe. And that's going to be, that's what's taking time right there. You don't want to damage the car. That's a pretty steep angle. 
to try to load that vehicle. So they're trying to take care of the car. They're trying to take care of the integrity of the race and get it back going again. But best to do it right and not hurry and damage the equipment. What a difference 24 hours makes yesterday. 19 crossing start finish line with the checkered flag and taking the victory today. It ends on a flatbed down in the toe of the boot. And that's motorsports. It's just the way it goes. It, it, Lady Luck has a lot to do with race wins and championships. And you can never say that it's over until it's over. I've seen races called before the car got to the checkered flag and it ran out of fuel and never made it there or at least lost positions on the way. So we will wait and see and see if we can get this started again. As soon as they get the 19 on and have it secured, they can rapidly get that tow vehicle out of the way and probably park it on the short course. And we could perhaps get a restart, but now we're closing in on five minutes to go. Time running out. We'll have to see what the race officials will do. Will they do a green white? Is two the minimum green flag laps that they'll do? Any way you look at it, I'm sure Danny Formal is going, there's a lot of fluid on the racetrack. Yes. I think you need to clean this up. It's probably going to take another 10 minutes to get it done. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be a really, I hope we do get it going again because it's going to be a really interesting contest. Patrick Kuyala, massively experienced in these cars. Danny Formal, of course, he's been driving these for three years now uh, and uh, is just, just getting better and better all the time. He's already uh, got six wins under his belt with that win yesterday. Three wins last year, three wins this, leads the championship. But Patrick Kuyala, is a former European and world champion in these cars. So he wants to uh, uh, put the pressure on uh, if he can. He's got a couple of lap cars in between himself and the, uh, and the, uh, the race leader. Uh, but uh, he's, gonna, he's, he's certainly not going to stop him from trying. Nelson Piquet Jr. also right there in third position. And then Eduardo Liberati. Then Loris Spinelli, who set the fastest lap of the race at a 146.091, which is a lap record. The lap record was set in 2019 by Richard Antonucci at a 146.2, at least in the pro class. Uh, in the it, Actually, as a pro-am, Loris Spinelli did a 145.672 last year. That is the fastest uh, lap. That is the lap record for Lamborghinis, but in the pro class, because uh, he was running as a pro-am last year, Spinelli. This year as a pro, he's looking to get that record as well. So he has a pro record and a pro-am record. That's kind of cool. Danny uh, Vermal leading in the pro category and pro-am, Damon Oki. Nico Rieger in AM and an LB Cup. Looking back down the order, Slade Stewart making up for the day that wasn't a great day for him yesterday, Jeremy. Yeah, and he's the last car, I think, on the lead lap is Slade Stewart in that car number 14. Well, there's our answer. Yeah, so he's, uh, he's uh, th yes, there is our answer. White flag is out here at Watkins That's Glen. Right. It will end under yellow. So the order, if they can continue to follow the safety car around, will end this way. Not the way you want to see it, but on your record and on the point sheet, a win is a win. The points are points, and it doesn't matter if the checkered flag is in the shadow of the yellow or not. It is a race win, and you take the points and you move on in the championship. Yeah, so we did the, the, there, was, uh, there was only uh, th three minutes remaining on the clock. The safety car takes around about, it was last lap around, last couple of laps have been three minutes, three and a half minutes, 3.33. So there was not time to get around one more lap behind the safety car to get back to green flag conditions. It's a 50-minute it's a race. That's it. It's a, it's a time-certain schedule here that IMSA runs. So unfortunate, but you know, that's kind of the way the cookie crumbles. But it, it was a great race up until then, and, uh, and assuming he can complete this final 3.4 miles, and it'll be yet another win for this prestige performance team. And a frustrating weekend for the 50. When you think about it there for the... Guys from O'Gara Motorsport, Change Racing, U.S. Racetronics, Lamborghini Beverly Hills, Eduardo Piscopo, Patrick Cuyala, they did everything they could on the racetrack to hunt down the number one. But for Mal and Marcelli, that entire prestige performance Wayne Taylor Racing Organization just seemed to have a handle on this car right now. Every racetrack that they show up at, they're quick, they don't struggle, they're calm, cool, and collected and the performance is there. We've seen that this weekend. And like I said, it's got to be frustrating for Kiala uh, with the problems that he had yesterday in Piscopo. They're driving their hearts out, but that number one just keeps slipping a little further away in the points.
Yeah, it does. Uh, so uh, I, I, 82 points now unofficially for Carl Marcelli and Danny Formal to the uh, 65 of Eduardo wow. Piscopo and uh, Patrick Cuyala and the 60 for Eduardo Liberati, who finished in the fourth position this afternoon. In Pro-Am, Damon Oki's going to come away with the victory there if he can make it back to the line, and I don't know why he wouldn't be able to do that. So a good run for that team, and it'll be the first win of the season for Oki and Patrick Liddy aboard the number eight. Liddy, a great job in the opening stint, and we, we're giving Damon Oki a lot of credit for letting those pro drivers through and not getting involved there and trying to maintain that lead by not getting involved in somebody else's battle. He's done that and with the help of the yellow. They will take their first victory of the season and that will now be eight different drivers who have won in the Pro-Am category this season. Four different pairings, eight different drivers. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, it's been uh, su super wide open there. Uh, and uh, in the in the points in Pro Am, unofficially, Tom Long and Ashton Harrison who finished third today. Will still lead on 73 points to the 69 of Brian Ortiz and Sebastian Carrazo. Sebastian Carrazo, who were poised, perhaps, to 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 make a pass on Damon, Damon Oki and take over the lead, but uh, unable to do so because of this full course caution. So, uh, 69 points for them. Uh, the, the winners today will have 47 points, and John Castro de Betts and Bryce and Lou have 62, so they remain in third position. And there's the checkered flag. The winners will celebrate. Like I said, it doesn't matter the circumstances. It is a race win. And for Danny Fromall and Kyle Marcelli, it's additional points separating them from Piscopo and Kuyala aboard the 50 in Pro-Am. We talked about it. Damon Oki celebrating his first victory of the season with his teammate Patrick Liddy, a good run for them in the AM category. Nico Rieger, David Staub, that's going to be big for them, Jeremy, because yeah. that's going to give them an additional lead. And then back in LB Cup, Slade Stewart makes up for the problems that he had yesterday and takes the victory in LB Cup. Yeah, in in AM, that win is huge. With the with the problems there for Ch Shan Chandrasoma, who's right there in the championship, all of a sudden it's going to be very, very costly because with as many cars as there are in AM, he's going to get no points at all. And 15 for the already leading car uh, team of David Starb and Nico Riga. So they will extend their margin over Cam Aliabadi. 13-point edge now uh, from David Starb and Nico Riga to Cam Aliabadi. And Slade Stewart, with that win in the LB Cup, will extend his lead in the LB Cup championship. Record-setting number of cars entered this weekend, and Chris Ward, who runs the program here, has said, don't be surprised if you see 40 by the end of the season. Big things for Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America. It's great to be a part of it. This is the halfway mark. We've now finished halfway, and more exciting things to come. Two more races in North America, and then we move to the championships in Portugal. Hope you stay with us for all of those rounds of Lamborghini Super Trofeo North America. For Jeremy Shaw and Brian Till, we'll see you next time. So long, everyone.